Uh, and now, just a couple of weeks after the closure of uh, responses to the interim report of that study, is a good time to take stock of where we are. So I'm delighted to be joined today by the FCA's Director of Strategy and Competition, Christopher Woolard, who's going to update us on the story. Christopher. Lovely. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Graham. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, I can barely imagine your contained excitement of thinking the last session of the day is a speech from the regulator. Uh, uh, there we go. Uh, but I'll try and keep this as uh, kind of to the point and as interesting as I can. There's also obviously a chance at the end of this to, uh, to, to, to have some questions and, and answers. Um, first of all, can I just say thank you to the PSA for uh, inviting me uh, to speak today. Um, I think this is a really important event in the calendar for government, for regulators and for industry to get together to discuss the issues and challenges confronting us in the long-term saving space. As Graham said a moment ago, over the last few years, the pensions and savings industry has been undergoing a period of unprecedented and significant change. And this change continues apace. Just one small example of that is that we published our final rules on the sale of the lifetime ISA earlier this week. And as a regulator, we are very aware that this period of change has required an enormous amount from everybody in the industry. And we do appreciate the efforts that have been made to accommodate and implement the various initiatives that we've seen and the credit the industry deserves for doing that, largely uh, to time, to scale, and with customers at real pace. But the subject I've obviously been asked to talk about today is our asset management market study. And in particular, I want to unpack some of the interim findings and potential remedies that we published back in November and what they mean for the customers of the industry, with a large section of those customers being pension funds and their members. So we found a number of areas where we think competition is not working effectively for this group of customers. And in particular, I want to focus on four themes this afternoon. Firstly, the transparency of costs and charges, where we found that many institutional investors are struggling to assess whether they're receiving value for money or not. The transparency around fiduciary management fees and performance, where we found that many trustees find it difficult to make comparisons across providers. The market fragmentation of pension schemes, where we have concerns that a lot of the schemes do not enjoy the benefits of scale, as Graham was talking about a moment ago, and the regulation of advice that's given to trustees by investment consultants. However, just before I get to the market study itself, I think it's worth just briefly reflecting and taking a step back on the importance of the pensions and long-term retirement savings sector and the challenge ahead more broadly. So in terms of the markets that we regulate, pensions and long-term investment probably comes at the top of the list in terms of their significance to our society. And I think for that reason it's critically important that where we can, we try our absolute best to get the settings right. Now as everyone in this room will know, there's been a very substantial shift from DB scheme membership to DC scheme membership. But the scale bears repeating for a moment. So recent work by the IFS tells us that for an average uh, private sector employee aged around 30, less than 10% of those who were born in the early 1980s are now active members of a defined benefit scheme, compared with over 40% of the same group of people in their 30s who were born just 20 years earlier. And we know that there are challenges in terms of growing returns in a low interest rate environment. One recent estimate, quite chilling estimate, suggests that to provide yourself with 70% of your gross income for 25 years of retirement when real interest rates are zero requires setting aside 45% of gross income every year, which is obviously well, well above most achievable saving rates. And those are major issues for politicians, for the industry, for society at large. So how do we as a regulator begin playing our part in tackling some of those issues and questions with the powers and responsibilities that we have? 
And that's what brings me back to the market study. First thing I'll say about the market study is we believe it's an incredibly important piece of work to have undertaken. The industry is so large and performs such a vital role that the market working efficiently and effectively has the potential to have a material impact on the lives of millions of consumers. The UK's asset management industry is the second largest in the world. It manages almost seven trillion of assets. Three quarters of all UK households rely on it in some way. 10 million are saving through workplace pensions. 11 million adults have some form of retail investment that relies on asset managers to grow their savings. So it is crucial that this market works well for everyone, particularly those end consumers. The interim findings and the remedies of the study were published back in November, as I said earlier, and have been the subject of much conversation and debate. A consultation period closed uh, around three weeks ago. We're now working our way through over 150 written responses. And I think it's worth saying that you know, we've seen real care and attention in how those responses have been structured. And we're very grateful for the thought that has gone into them from whatever angle those responses are coming from. We also held a series of round tables with a range of participants, including asset managers, investment consultants, trustees, and consumer groups. And I'm confident that probably many of you in the room have had some kind of interaction or your organisations have had some kind of interaction with us during the consultation process. And I hope you felt that we've been listening and that your views have been heard. So the top line finding of the market study was that there's weak price competition in a number of areas of the industry. The result of this is that investors are paying more than they should for asset management services, which in turn is having a material impact on investment returns. What I'd now like to do is discuss in some detail those findings I mentioned earlier, those four themes I mentioned earlier, that relate to institutional investors. And they're perhaps elements of the report that haven't had quite as much attention as those that are strictly on the retail side of the report itself. So when we look at the institutional market, one of the striking things is just the sheer range of investors. There are a number of very large players in this space. They're sophisticated investors, and we believe they're they are able to negotiate good deals with their asset managers. In respect of those guys, actually the market is working well uh, in many ways. However, there is a long tail of smaller institutional investors mainly 32,000 small pension schemes, many of them with less than 10 members, who can behave much more like retail investors, as Graham was, was, was speaking about a few moments ago, and, more importantly, often achieve similar outcomes to those retail investors. So to just walk through those four themes very briefly. The first is the transparency of costs and charges. It's important to state up front that costs and charges matter, matter hugely in this market. Even a small reduction in charges, or what can appear a small reduction in charges, can have a material impact on the amount of money consumers will have in their savings and pension pots. As the report sets out, if you assume a growth rate in line with the FTSE All Share Average, an investor paying a quarter of a percent in disclosed charges on a £20,000 investment would earn over £9,000 more over the 20-year period than the same investor if they were paying a 1% charge. So it's important that there are competitive pressures at play here so that costs and charges can be compared across offerings, so that institutional investors can be certain of how much they're paying for these services and, that the, and the service they're actually receiving. And a level of scrutiny can be applied to those costs and charges. We heard from a number of institutional investors about the challenges they faced in getting the data they needed to assess whether they were getting value for money. We heard that investors often struggle to get information on transaction charges, both implicit and explicit charges. And we also heard that information about charges is often unclear for those investing through more complex fund structures, such as hedge funds and private equity funds. That lack of transparency, and therefore challenge on some of these costs, is likely to contribute to asset managers being less effective at controlling complex costs, as well as the institutional investors' ability to drive competition and get the value for money that everyone needs. So we clearly see a need to improve the way that information is provided and made available to institutional investors. 
Now, we also recognise there are industry-led attempts to develop greater cost transparency, and we support the industry in continuing to work together with investor organisations to develop a standardised template to disclose asset management-related fees and charges. However, we've also asked for feedback from stakeholders on whether those industry measures will go far enough. And to be frank, we've heard mixed views on whether they are preferable to more regulatory improvements. In looking at this, and as we move towards our final report, if we find the industry-led initiatives are not likely to be successful or sufficiently comprehensive, we will have to consider the need for further regulatory intervention. Moving on to the next part of this. Fiduciary management fees and performance were cited as a further area where information provided to institutional investors is particularly opaque. We heard that it's difficult to compare the performance of providers in advance and to know whether another provider would have delivered better outcomes. Concerns around opacity are particularly relevant as in many cases schemes use their current investment consultant to provide fiduciary management services so they're not shopping around. There's currently little public reporting and scrutiny of fiduciary management fees and performance which makes it difficult for investors to assess the performance of fiduciary managers and to compare them with each other, both at the point of sale but more importantly perhaps on an ongoing basis. And this lack of transparency is likely to make it difficult for pension trustees to manage conflicts of interest when investment consultants also provide fiduciary management, again potentially leading to poor outcomes. We sought, therefore, views on the ways to improve the scrutiny of fiduciary management services. We're looking at ways to provide trustees with clearer information about the charges and performance of fiduciary management, and what information should be made public, and the ways in which the performance of fiduciary managers could also be benchmarked. In the round tables we held, this was one of the areas where support was basically unanimous, with all stakeholders, no matter where they came from, agreeing that improvements could and should be made. The third area, is the focus on the pooling of pension funds, which again, Graham spoke about a few moments ago. As I've said, there are tens of thousands of small pension schemes, and we're concerned that this market fragmentation means that a lot of schemes do not enjoy the benefits of scale that they might otherwise do. In particular, they lack bargaining power when negotiating with asset managers. We would like to consider whether there are ways in which we can encourage the pooling of pension scheme assets and in particular what the outcomes, if that was to happen, for investors could be. For example, in Australia, there's a requirement for trustees to consider whether schemes are of an appropriate size to drive value for money for their members. We also know that there are some market solutions already out there in terms of either master trust for DC and fiduciary management for DB. Through the round tables and the feedback we received, we got some pretty strong support for this concept around pooling pension assets but also some very clear practical challenges of how might this work. One solution may lie in making these existing solutions that are available in the market perhaps more effective or perhaps easier to access in some way. We've also proposed exploring with government potential benefits of greater pooling scheme attention schemed assets. And I also note that this is one of the things that the PLSA's defined benefit task force are investigating and we very much welcome your contribution to the discussion. Lastly, the question of investment consultants. I've mentioned that we have identified a number of concerns with the way in which the investment consultancy market is working. These include a very high concentration, low switching, asymmetric information, and potential conflicts of interest. Asset allocation is crucial in determining fact, uh, sorry, is a crucial determining factor in long-term investment performance, as an important way in which consultants can add value to their clients. However, we found this very limited scrutiny of the asset allocation advice given by investment consultants. The quality of advice in terms of the returns generated or the value added is not measured or monitored in a consistent or comparable way. And this is a very, very important part of the asset management value chain. Asset allocation advice provided by investment consultants and employee benefit, benefit consultants can be fundamental to investment returns and therefore the growth in pensions and savings and those pots held by millions of investors. But currently, this advice is unregulated. For these reasons, for the first time, we've proposed to use our powers to make a market investigation reference to the Competition and Markets Authority on the institutional investment advice market. In the interim report, we suggested the CMA may be better placed to explore what the impact 
and difficulties of assessing the quality of investment consultancy advice may have on competition between investment consultants, the advice they offer, and ultimately the returns investors receive. In addition, we've also recommended to the Treasury that they consider bringing the provision of this advice within the FCA's regulatory perimeter. Now, unsurprisingly, perhaps because of the strength of those recommendations, this is an area where we've heard some very mixed views. So to sum up, what does all this mean for pension funds? Our findings and proposed remedies should mean that institutional investors are better able to deliver value for money for their customers. Value for money is crucial when we talk about long-term savings and pensions. Improvements in value for money, even quite small ones, can have a very significant impact on pensions and saving pots. The package of remedies we've proposed is designed to boost competitive pressure. With more effective competition, we expect to see investors being better able to find the best investment product that suits their needs at a reasonable and fair price. Asset managers are entrusted with a very clear social responsibility to the nation's savers. Our job as the regulator is to make sure that we get the settings right for this market, that it's efficient, that it's effective, and it serves the interests of savers. We're fully appreciative of the commercial complexity that the, interest, that the industry is operating under and the complexity of the policy environment. But our findings point for the need for reform. So this is a story to be continued. The precise implications we hope to make clearer in the summer when we conclude our report. But I hope I've been able to give you a sense of our thinking and our determination that competition will work well for consumers in this market. Thank you very much.